So as our correspondent was saying, the attack was the deadliest in Jerusalem in years and came only days after the deadliest raid on Palestinians in the West Bank in decades. Many fear what's coming next. For more, let's speak to Hugh Lovett from the European Council on Foreign Relations. Hello to you, and thank you for speaking to France 24. Israel's government said to be the country's most far right in its history. What steps do you think it will take to try and restore calm? Um, so clearly, we can expect a, a very hardline response from this government, um, as you said, because of the composition of some of its ministers who are extremely hard right and, and pro settlement. I, the one particular one of the particularities of the attacks uh, yesterday and today is that they were conducted by Palestinians from East Jerusalem under Israeli occupation, so under Israeli control. Um, I think we'd be having a different conversation if these Palestinians were from the West Bank, which is under, uh, from parts of the West Bank under the control of the Palestinian Authority or from Gaza under Hamas's control. So specifically with East Jerusalem, you know, I think clearly there's going to be a increased security crackdown on these neighborhoods, deployment of Israeli um, um, security forces, potentially the closure of some of these neighborhoods. But going forward, going forward, I think this will also be used you know, as a pretext to accelerate um, Israel's um, settlement uh, policies within East Jerusalem and its uh, um, eviction of Palestinian families in some of these areas. And we've seen the security raids in Janine for, what, eight or nine months now. If those pick up, if the settlements pick up, if this hardline government follows along uh, th that course of action, is this going to push us towards another infatata? I think we're definitely heading in that direction. And when you, uh, you look at all the factors at play, I think they all, all are aligning behind uh, the potential for a new intifada at some point. But I think we need to recognize that you know, we've already been in a situation of at least of a low intensity conflict uh, for the past 11 months, as you said, in terms of the uptick in Israeli security raids in the northern West Bank, but also the rearming, remilitarization of parts of Palestinian society and the reemergence of Palestinian armed groups. So, you know, these dynamics have been very worrying and they've been very worrying for uh, a number of months now. And so we've seen a, a slow deterioration in the situation. And I think over the last 48 hours, we've now seen an eruption of, of, these, uh, of this tension and ongoing violence. Uh, so much of the world's attention has been on Ukraine, but America's CIA chief was in Israel on a visit. The U.S. Secretary of State due to arrive in the region uh, tomorrow on Sunday. What, what role can the Americans play here? I think, to be frank, realistically, it's going to be limited. And it's going to be limited because the U.S. has uh, has been disengaged, really, from this conflict uh, for the last few years, at least since the Biden administration entered office. And so the reasons we're here today are is an accumulation of reasons of challenges and problems over the past years. And so they're not easily undone in a matter of days. I think if the Americans really want to turn things around, then it will require a serious investment of diplomatic time and energy to address the, the root causes, which is, you know, very hardline policies on the Israeli side that uh, predate the Netanyahu government, uh, but also the weakening and uh, delegitimization of the Palestinian Authority uh, within the West Bank, and of course, the lack of any political horizon for ending Israel's occupation. Hugh, thank you very much for your time and your analysis. Hugh Lovett from the European Council on Foreign Relations.